What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're taking a look at the WiMAX at 1080p portable screen here in this review. And I've been using it for a couple of months. Actually, this isn't a sponsored video, but WiMAX it did send this over for me to check out and it's been a pretty good experience. So let's get into it here. And the first thing are some of the specs. So the WiMAX at M1560 CT3 portable monitor is a 1080p 60 Hertz, 15.6 inch, IPS anti-glare 250 nit screen that has a matte finish. An HDMI mini port, two USB-C ports that support data, touch, and power, micro USB OTG port, and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and two speakers, one on each side of the unit. Now, unfortunately, my unboxing video got lost in some file transfers, but I did just want to mention that the unboxing experience was something that I had noticed first off when they sent this to me and I opened it up. It was really good. Everything was packaged nicely and they include everything for you from a decent manual to all the wires you're going to need and that type of stuff to get started. Uh, USB-C to USB-C wire, type A to USB-C power and all of that. So the unboxing experience itself and the way everything was packaged was really good. Now, what else is nice is you can mount this. So we have a 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter um, M4 threaded connections here. So mounting this to your desk or your wall or whatever setup can be really handy when it comes to this unit. You also get a smart cover that comes with the device. I've been using this a couple of months and it's held up pretty well. It's got some prints and stuff here and there on it that need to be cleaned off again, but it's held up pretty decently. However, there are some things I want to mention about this cover a little bit later on in the video as we get more into it. Now moving on from there, we've got the portable monitor itself here, which is currently plugged into my Steam Deck, and it's got a very nice feel to it. It's lightweight, but it has good build quality, and if you guys watch my channel much, you know I'm a really a fan of matte finish screens, especially if you're in brighter areas or whatever the case, I just really prefer them. So good job here on that. Now here's our left side here with our menu button, our power button, and our headphone jack, along with one of our speakers. And that's pretty much it for what we have over on this side. The top is very minimal with no ports or anything up here. It's just a clean, minimal design. Uh, I really do like the uh, small bezels and design of this unit. We also have the other speaker over here on the other side and our HD mini, our two USB-C ports and our OTG mini uh, micro USB rather on this side. And overall, just a decently built, nice monitor that I've really used a lot here when it comes to my very small desk setup that I've got here, which we're going to switch over to here in just a minute. But before we do that, I want to talk about this smart cover. So when you go to attach this, it's pretty easy. I'll just lay it down. It's a lot like an iPad smart cover. It's got a magnet on the back that's going to attach, and then you can kind of put it in these couple of different positions here. The issue I have with this is just that the smart cover itself, compared to the great build quality of the monitor, is just very flimsy and thin, causing it to be a little bit uh, wobbly in these grooves. It doesn't always want to stay there uh, perfectly. The back magnet doesn't always want to stay, and I've had times when I'm shifting this around on the desk that it just doesn't want to stay put in those very thin grooves because the the cover is so thin itself those grooves don't have much to catch on there and uh, just considering how nice the unboxing experience was and how nice the monitor itself feels and works and uh, it feels like a decent device the cover itself just leaves you kind of wanting more it gets the job done and it certainly hasn't broke on me but I just think there could be some improvements made on that side now, the manual I had mentioned earlier, I just want to quickly mention, I do appreciate having a decent comprehensive manual that I can just grab, pick up, and look at when I get the monitor, and it shows you how to set up and hook up all the different devices, rather than just scanning a code and going online and searching for things. I do appreciate a decent little manual in the box. Now, when it comes to the rest of the monitor, let's get into it here. Now, I have it hooked up to the Steam Deck, which is true portability. If your device can put out enough power like the Steam Deck, I can power this monitor without plugging it in, making it more of a truly portable experience if I want to. It also supports touchscreen with the USB-C plugged in that way, which works really well. Whether you're in desktop mode, maybe you're running Windows, or you're running SteamOS or game mode, the all the five point and touch and zoom and all this stuff worked really good when it came to the touchscreen for me. And the viewing angles are also really good, and the colors are really good. This being an IPS monitor and matte finish, I wasn't that surprised to not lose too much color or clarity when I go from side to side from some sharp, sharp angles. Not that I would be gaming this way anyways, but colors are fantastic and look great on here, especially with some tweaking, and angles are great. Now, when it comes to the uh, UI or the settings here on the monitor itself, you can access that over here on the left side, and you've got like your brightness and contrast and all of that, your color temp, hue, saturation. We do have FreeSync in here, which I have on, and I did use that with Xbox. It appears to work properly. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Uh, we've got our sound over here under that, which is just for our volume and mute. The speakers are kind of what you would expect for a device like this, but we'll take a 
closer look at that. And then we have our languages and stuff like that in here and our connections. Now, if you want to go through the different modes in Eco, it's really just standard game, movie, photo, and vivid. I've been going between game and standard and doing some user settings here and there, but I've definitely been able to get a picture quality on this IPS monitor that I'm really happy with, especially when it comes to the color and the viewing angles. Now, I've used this mainly for my Steam Deck, especially my small setup here, either as an extra monitor for my PC or for my Steam Deck sitting here has been really useful. And I can even have the Steam as my, or Steam Deck as my second monitor if I want to, or whatever the case. And this just works really great and allows me to see things a little easier when I'm sitting here and I don't have to tie up my other monitor for my PC here. I can just keep the workflow going. So it's been really handy for me to use it the past couple months for this. It's been a pretty flawless experience. I have my uh, deck docked. I'm using a mouse and keyboard and you can't use touch screen with HDMI mini versus the USB-C, but it works really well. I've also used a lot of game mode and a lot of gaming when it comes to the Steam Deck with this monitor and all of those experiences have been really good as well. Nice colors and clarity and everything. We'll get into it here for the Steam Deck. So again, like I said, an IPS panel with a little bit of playing around, you can get a really nice picture on here. And as far as the refresh rate of 60 hertz, of course, depending on what device you're playing on and what FPS you're getting, it does a really good job. It looks really nice. We don't have major tearing issues. Um, ghosting is another thing, especially I was expecting with an IPS panel not to really have, and we don't. We don't have a lot of ghosting or issues, which is great as well. And just gaming feels really fluid and really nice. So if I'm just trying to do some work on my main PC, not tie up my monitor, and I've got this thing going, I plug my deck in, and I've got some gaming or some other things happening on the deck, and it's been really nice. And with the 1080p panel and the aspect ratio for the Steam Deck, 720p 60fps gaming is actually pretty good here as well, and looks fairly sharp even when you're up close to this 15.6 inch monitor. Now, for just one second, we'll talk about the speakers. There's not a lot to them. They're kind of what you would expect with a device like this, not heavy on the lows, but I'll let you hear them here. Now these may not be super impressive, but they do get the job done and it's nice to have some nice, decent working speakers with your portable monitor. Now I also got into some switch here, which I didn't have any problems plugging in and running right from my dock. And I have it just right behind the monitor here. So it was always easy for me to kind of swap out. And I like to jump into something like Metroid Prime or some other games here and there on the switch. And while I played that mostly in handheld mode, it was working really well with this monitor and I did use it a bit here and there without any problems. The Xbox works extremely well too. I had my Series S plugged in here, into here on and off playing some games and messing around with it. And again, colors looked really good. Motion was really good. 1080p and it did allow me to kick in the VRR here, which the monitor was supposed to support. And it did seem to work properly when I turned it on and got into game, which was nice. When I jumped into Need for Speed, the smoothness of the screen, no matter what, and other games as well, with this uh, connected to the Series X was fantastic. And again, it just looked really nice to play. So uh, being able to just use this for multiple different uh, pl platforms and consoles and devices, even if you want to get into you know, your phones and your iPads and your laptops, you could use this monitor for just about anything. And that really brings me to the end of the video. You really can use this monitor for just about anything that you want to plug it into. It has its own power supply. You could plug it in to power itself in case your device can't do so. Or if you want to save your Steam Deck battery, you can see here it also allows for charging pass through, which is great. And yeah, I've been using the device about two months. All the ports still work just fine. All the buttons still work fine. The screen still looks great. 1080p matte finish IPS. And my main two gripes would be that smart cover that needs some work for sure. And the 250 nit screen isn't going to be bright enough for everyone. Depending on where you're at for bright lights or outside, you may want to look at something brighter. But for the most part, I've just had a decent experience with this monitor and I'm going to continue using it here. It's about a $200 purchase. And if it's something you're interested in, it'll be a link in the description. You can jump over to Amazon and check that out. And if it's not for you, maybe there's something else there from Wemax it or uh, another type of screen that might interest you. All right, guys, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.